With a nonlinear field velocity relationship, there's a different mechanism that could saturate the current of a MOSFET other than pinch-off. So we obtained a, an expression for ohmic current when we have a, uh, a velocity field relationship that is nonlinear. Now we want to find out how this affects saturation. So the best way to do this is to take the expression of ohmic current and then differentiate this with respect to VDS. So do partial differentiation with respect to VDS and equate the current with zero. This is basically going to give us the inflection point of the current, which is actually the way we found out the point at which the channel pinches off in a long channel transistor. However, when we do this with um, the, uh, the, the transistor, which has a nonlinear relationship between field and uh, velocity, the, this differentiation gives us the following relationship. I over E set L is going to be equal to K into VGS minus V threshold minus VDS. Now, it's important at any point to check that what we are doing makes sense because um, if we are dealing with a long channel transistor, then L is going to be large. Specifically, E set L is going to be a large value, and this whole quantity is going to reduce to zero, which gives us a pinch off point when VDS is equal to VGS minus V threshold, which is the pinch off uh, saturation uh, voltage we are used to. In this case, however, we have to consider the cases where E sat L is not a small quantity, is not a, a large quantity. So we find that saturation occurs when this relation is true. Unfortunately, this is not an expression of VDS alone. It's an expression of a relationship between VDS and I. And so we find that saturation happens when VDS and I, the current, are related in this way. But because we have the expression of, of current to begin with, we can take uh, the expression of current in terms of VDS from this equation and substitute in the original current equation and then solve for VDS set, which gives us an expression for VDS equal to 2 into VGS minus V threshold divided by 1 plus square root 1 plus 2 into VGS minus V threshold divided by E sat N. Now, this is the value of VDS at which current um, stops being dependent on VDS, which is the value of VDS at which the current saturates, basically. You can clearly see that uh, if the channel length is large, i.e. the quantity E sat L is uh, large, then this whole fraction reduces to nearly null, and the denominator here reduces to uh, 2, which gives you an expression of VDS set equals to VGS minus V threshold, which is the pinch-off saturation point. And so if E set L is uh, basically uh, much larger than VGS minus V threshold, we end up with an expression of VDS set equals to uh, VGS minus V threshold. This is the traditional uh, saturation mechanism, which we know as, uh, off, as pinch off saturation. Now, if we, if we want to uh, obtain an expression for saturation current, all we have to do is we have to take the expression of ohmic current that we already obtained and substitute for the value of VDS that we obtained as VDS sat. This gives us an expression for saturation current, I sat equals K over 2 into VGS minus V threshold all squared divided by 1 plus VGS minus V threshold over E sat L. Now let's take a look at this. And um, uh, this is just basically uh, a current uh, a saturation current that combines the nonlinearity or folds in the nonlinearity uh, that is that was introduced through uh, the velocity field equation, but this saturation current actually has two very useful asymptotic cases. So if 
ESAT L is very large, we already discussed how this would uh, reduce to a uh, saturation current equal to K over 2 into VGS minus V threshold all square. This is the saturation current for long channel transistors we are used to. You can reach this result by assuming that ESAT L is a large quantity, specifically that it is uh, significantly larger than VGS minus V threshold. And this is only going to happen if L is significantly large. So if L is significantly large, we go back to the original long channel case with pinch off saturation. If, on the other hand, we have a short channel transistor, then we have to go back to the expression of VDS sat which was uh, VGS minus V threshold over 1 plus VGS minus V threshold over E set L. And we have to uh, re-express this as uh, E set L over E set L over VGS minus V threshold plus 1. Now, because the quantity E sat L is small for a short channel transistor, E sat L is specifically much smaller than VGS minus V threshold. Because the length is small, then this quantity disappears. And VDS sat reduces to approximately E sat L. Now, E sat L is obviously also VDS sat because uh, VDS is generally the electric field divided by the length of the channel over which, um, uh, excuse me, the electric field is generally VDS divided by the length of the channel over which the VDS is applied. And so to find saturation current in this case, we go back to the uh, expression of uh, ohmic current, and uh, which was K into VGS minus V threshold into VDS minus 0.5 VDS square divided by 1 plus VDS over E set L. And what we have to do here is replace every occurrence of VDS with VDS set. Now VDS set is obviously E set L in this case. And so uh, with just a little bit of simplification, we end up with uh, I equals to K into VDS set over 2 into VGS minus V threshold minus 0.5 VDS set. It's very important when you look at this, uh, at this current equation to realize that VDS set is actually a constant number. It's a constant number for any given transistor. This is not an applied voltage. It's a constant in the same way that threshold voltage is a constant. So uh, this leads to one conclusion about saturation current when we have this very these very small channel transistors, which is um, that the current the saturation current actually becomes linear, and that's a very dangerous thing. So we have to talk about whether or not we like that. But one last thing is is that it's sometimes useful to express um, saturation current in this case in another way, uh, and it's it's actually pretty simple. So if we expand K into mu n C oxide. W over L into VDS set, and we have um, VGS minus V threshold minus 0.5 VDS set. We just have to realize that VDS set divided by L is uh, E set, the uh, saturation electric field, and so this whole constant outside the uh, current is 0.5 mu n uh, into C oxide. Uh, w times uh, E sat. But also, if you look at the original uh, uh, curve relating Vn to E that we drew at the beginning uh, of this video, you will notice that um, if we use the piecewise linear approximation, the saturation velocity V sat and the saturation field E sat are related through the mobility so that V sat is equal to mu n E sat, which allows us to remove the mu n E sat term here and replace it with uh, V sat, the saturation velocity for the expression of saturation current 0.5 W C oxide 
times v sat, where v here is the velocity of of electrons. So let's just write uh, v sat n into v g s minus v threshold minus 0.5 v d s sat.